Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Up by Dr. Tanya Bose. So I hope you like my previous videos on complex integration. So this video will also focus on the next part of complex integration. So if you haven't watched my previous video, do watch my previous video to understand the basic concepts, right? So here again, we will deal with complex integration part two. So let us try to see what is in this video. So we will be understanding the basic properties of line integrals here, right? So what are the first properties of line integral? That is the linearity property, right? What is the linearity property? Linearity property says that whenever we have a complex function, like suppose we are given that the function f of z is equal to k1 f1, plus k2 f2. So as we do it in real integrals, we always break the integrals first on function f1 and then on function f2 and then we integrate and then we do the sum, right? The same thing we can do over complex integration also. So if we have a sum of functions, we can take it term by term. We can calculate the integrals and then we can add up to get the final. Right? And if there are certain constants in those functions, we can always take those constants out of the integral. We can perform the integrals over the path C and then we can add them up. Right? So the most important factor that I also told you in my previous video, that all the complex integrals, they are path dependent. So on which curve we are integrating is, that is more important than the initial and the final point. Right? So we can always break up the integrals term by term, right? So that is our linearity property. So as I said, that integral over C, K1, F1, Z plus K2, F2, Z, dz, you can always take it term by term. So you can see K1 and K2 are constants. So we can take it out. So we will get K1 integral over C, F1, Z, dz plus K2 integral over C, F2, Z, dz, right? So that is our first basic property of a line integral. Now, what is the second property of line integral? The second property of line integral is the sense reversal integral. So what does it mean? It means that whenever you are integrating a complex integral from the path Z0 to Z, you can always reverse the path. You can change the limits. You can write it from Z to Z0 also, but then the sense will get reversed. So you have to put a negative sign, right? So you need to introduce a minus sign whenever you are integrating from left to right or from right to left. That's important. Then the third property of line integral. The third property says partitioning of path. Suppose you have a curve which is consisting of two different curves, C1 and then C2. Suppose you have curve C1 from Z0 to Z1 and then Z1 to Z2, there is another curve C2. So you can always break the curve C along the curve C1 and C2. As, as I introduced it in the last video also, that your curve C consists of very smooth functions, right? They are very small, small functions. You can always break the entire curve into small units and you can then sum up over those curves and you will get the answer over the entire curve, right? Okay. So now, so let us try to figure out this question. Evaluate integration 0 to 1 plus 2 eta real part of z, dz along the curve c star. Now what is the curve c star? C star is given to us as the path joining the origin to the point A that is represented by the point 1 plus 2 i, right? So you can also see that the same points have been also joined through curve C1 and C2. As I told in my previous videos that complex integration is always path dependent, right? It doesn't depend only on the initial and the final point. It is dependent on the path on which you are integrating. So, on whichever path you are integrating, it's not necessary that it will give you the same answer. Like in reals, when you integrate it over 0 to A, 
whatever path you choose, you get the same answer because it is path independent there, right? It doesn't depend upon the path. But in complex integration, it is path dependent. So on C star, you get some answer. On C1 and C2, when you add them, you'll, you might get a different answer, right? So let us try to figure it out. So how to integrate it over C star? Let's try to find out what is our C star. You can see that it is a path connecting the points 0, 0 to the point 1, comma 2. Now, how do you get the equation of a curve passing through two points? So, we can consider this point as x1, this as y1, this as x2 and this as y2. So, we know that the equation of a straight line is given by y minus y1 divided by y2 minus y1 is equal to x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1. So, let us put the values here. So we get y minus 0 divided by 2 is equal to x minus 0 divided by 1. So when you cross multiply, we get the equation as y is equal to 2. So in my previous video, I have done the question by converting the complex integral in terms of either x or in terms of y. There are only two things, right? Either you can convert z in terms of parametric form t or you can convert it in terms of x or y. So here I'll give you another method how to convert it into the parametric form. So since we are getting y is equal to 2x, so let us try to put x is equal to t. Right? So if x is equal to t, that means what is y? y will become 2t. Right? What is z here? z is equal to x plus iota y. So dz will become dx plus iota dy. So let us complete, uh, uh, calculate it in terms of t. If x is t, dx will become dt. dy is, y is 2t. So dy will become 2 times dt. So I can take out t, dt common and I will get 1 plus 2 iota times dt. Right? Now, 1 plus 2 iota dt I, will, I can put the value in place of dz. And the second thing that I require is real part of z. Real part of z is x. So that is equal to t. So let us put the value here. So when we are integrating it over c star, I can replace real part of z dz by integration. Real part of z is becoming t. And dz is becoming 1 plus 2 iota times t. So now I've converted the entire integral in terms of the variable t. So I need the limits of t. So you can get the limits of t either from the variable x or from the variable y. I'll tell you both. If I take the variable x, t start when you see at the point origin, x is 0. And at the point a, x is 1. What is x? x is t. So t is 0 and t is 1. So, the limits of t becomes 0 to 1. And if you take y at origin y is 0 and at the point a y is equal to 2. So, what is y? y we have replaced it with 2t. So, 2t is equal to 0 that means t is equal to 0. Similarly, 2t is equal to 2 means t is equal to 1. So, whatever we choose either x or y we will get the limits as 0 to 1. So, when you integrate it, 1 plus 2 iota is the constant. Integration of t is t square by 2. We will put the limits and we get the answer as 1 plus 2 iota divided by 2. Right? Let's move on to the next question. So, now we have to integrated over the curve C which consists of C1 and C2. So let us try to find out what is on the curve C1. Right? Now what is this curve C1? C1 is joining 0 to 1. So obviously y is equal to 0. Right? So my real part of z is simply x. Right? So it will remain x only. And what is dz? dz is dx plus iota dy. 
So if y is 0, so dy will automatically become 0 and dz left is dx. So on curve C1, real part of z will become x and dz will become dx. Where is x ranging from? x is ranging from 0 to 1. Right? You can check the limits of x. x is ranging from 0 to 1. So integration of x is x square by 2. We will put the limits 0 to 1. So we will get here 1. Right? Now let us try to figure it out on curve C2. On curve C2, what is happening? It is joining the point 1 comma 0 with the point 1 plus 2 iota. So that means this point is nothing but 1 comma. So that means what is remaining same here? Here the x component is equal to 1. Right? So that means this curve is nothing but x is equal to 1. So if x is equal to 1, I need real part of z. So real part of z is x and x is equal to 1. So real part of z will become 1. And what is dz now? dz is dx plus iota dy. So if x is 1, dx will become 0. So we are only left with iota dy. So now let us put the value on the curve C2. So real part of Z is 1 and what is DZ? DZ is iota times dy. You can see that this integral is converted in terms of y. So now where is y ranging from? y is ranging from 0 to 2. So we will put the limits here 0 to 2. So we will take out iota common. You will get y here. Limits from 0 to 2. So you will get 2 iota. Right. So now let's add up the two values. So you will get half plus 2 iota. Right. Got it. So you can also do this question, the same question in parametric form. Like we are converting it in terms of x. So you can convert it in terms of t and you can do the same question. Right. So I hope you understood the question. Right. Okay. So you can practice some more questions, right? And do check that how the complex integrals are being done on various curves, right? So that's it. So thank you so much for listening to me. And if you like the video, do hit the like button and do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video to keep yourselves updated with what I'm doing. And believe in yourself and you will definitely do it. It's not that difficult. So have a nice day and thank you so much.